Hello and welcome to Tights TV. Uh, quite a bit to get through, to be fair. Uh, we've got uh, another game at Oakwell coming up. Uh, 65 minute applause for um, uh, a fan that sadly lost his life. The FA Cup debacle, we're still been rumbling about, but yeah, we'll get back to the game because uh, there's going to be some uh, things to talk about. Ryan, pleasure to join me, mate. I know yeah, it's been busy, uh, trying to fit in and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, just a, a bit of a recap. A free not win Chil uh, on Tuesday against Shrews. We've had a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, free not win. Again, he won't, uh, I want to say, performance to write him about but at the end of the day you can't knock it three goals a clean sheet yeah and I, I said that I thought it's, it's difficult to be mm -hmm. critical because we won three nil and we won at home you know with a, a, you know as, as home form has been pretty poor so far this season i think if it had been half decent we're probably up near the top of the league if not top mm -hmm. of the league so mm -hmm. um but yes yeah, i mean penalty and all. With a three nil win but they offered nothing did they shrewsbury they offered not they were side i've seen all season home and away they were shocking yeah yeah, uh, they were really poor. I think they had a spell of about 15 minutes where they had a bit of possession, but did not with it. But mm. you know, there were some really good passages of play in in the game. There were some fantastic uh, passages of play. The second and third goals were just, you know, we swept them and just swept them to one side. Mm. It'd be nice to see a bit more of that. I mean, we were coming on to them in the first half. You know, that that break we're on over and over again in that first half on it they were yeah. pushing the other eye line and that break were on over and over again and we just didn't seem to make the right decision but it were better to see that we were at least trying to be a bit more attacking uh we're certainly a lot more attacking than we were on saturday but there were also mm -hmm. a bit little bit of possession you know window wiper football left right left right mm -hmm. um which made it a bit flat um i, I mean atmosphere were a bit flat well we'd won it that well, and justly so i think because i think you know, winning 3-0, you'd expect it to be a bit better. But I just think recent week's performances, um, we're not getting beat, you know, but it's just a bit dull. Oh, the football's oh, a bit dull, that's all oh, at times. And, it, and it, it, like I said, you can't fake an atmosphere. You can't force it. You can't just start saying, oh, well, because we're winning 3-0, we should be cheering. The football's On that, Ryan, have you noticed that it's like a bit more of a zealous in punch end where lads would not normally do start things going, they're, they're, they're clamping down on it. Yeah, like cycling it, it? Well, I just don't know why we don't get say standing in OR1 and OR2 in yeah. Ponte, maybe even OR3 if there's if there's if there's call for it to people do it because the mm. seats are all in place, all they need to do is put barriers in. It's not like you know it has to go crackers, is it? You just have to put them safety barriers in so people can't lo lunge forward. Mm. Um, mm. And I think you know it, it stops us getting worrying about points deductions from FA uh, uh, yeah. from uh, from EFL, yeah. Then it, the lads that want to stand can still stand. The you know the stewards are not having to come into the crowd and ask them because I'm I'm sure they're hating doing that stewards they're only do, they're only doing the job that they've been asked to do mm. they are we know some of them are pricks but they've also do a difficult job dealing with drunk lads on a weekend and they're, they're only a lot of them are only following orders aren't they they're only following yeah. what they've been told to do um so it don't help does it because that top corner of Ponzi is what gets everything going isn't it it's yeah. whatever gets everything going so. Yeah, it would be a bit flat. I think midweeks can be a bit flat unless it's a big game sometimes because the people aren't got as much ailing them, have they? <laughs> <It's not laughs> Another thing as well is... They get up in the morning, so it's not, it's not same. It's, it's never going to be the same as a Saturday, but I think the performance just didn't get it didn't get going at times, even though that I mentioned earlier there's some great passages of play. It, it was just a bit flat. And I think, for me, I'd love to get songs going, but... You feel a bit of a fool if you try singing and then nobody do it. Do you, do you think, think as well? On that sort of little bit of an edge with it. Do you think as well away opposition? I mean, no disrespect to Shrewsbury. Yeah, so it's yeah away opposition week, makes but... a massive. I mean, that really does. It is one of the biggest drawbacks about being in League One. You know, mm. the Championship. You've seen sides like Plymouth, although Plymouth are doing a bit better than Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday are doing shocking, which is marvellous. But you know, they're they're just being in that league and having the bigger away end, the bigger oh. away support makes a massive difference. Um, Blackpool, me, maybe. I think, I think we'd have really struggled in Championship this season. So we're staying in League One, but one of the one of the side effects of that is there's not that many teams that are going to bring a lot, is there? You know, mm. there's Bolton, mm. Derby. Who else is going to bring a big crowd? Yeah, true. I mean, you know yeah. I mean? Portsmouth brought quite a few. But Blackpool, it Blackpool did well. They would have brought a lot more if they were coming midweek. Blackpool did well when they came. Yeah, Blackpool. Black, yeah, Blackpool always. Oh, Blackpool always bring a decent following, don't they? Yeah, 
Uh, and it was midweek as well, so Blackpool, yeah, Blackpool brought a few. But I mean, still, it were only fifteen hundred, were it? Hmm. And it holds nearly six thousand, that thing. So hmm. very much looking forward to Derby at home whenever hmm. we play them. It's sometime in New Year because th- th- they'll definitely feel. I think Bolton will obviously bring bring a lot as well. Yeah. But yeah, it does. Make, it makes a mate. You you know, being there all quite all them years, it makes yeah. a massive difference when away fans are singing and making noise. We're trying to retaliate, and it comes yeah. back when there's an amp, when there's two hundred fans coming from Shrewsbury. Sat in a stand that holds six thousand. It's, it's that's not that's not a big at them because it's a big no, no. Sure a massive club. But it yeah, that it, it's just the way that is the way that the way that Oakwell set out where once you know one of the yeah, one stands behind the goal is just for away fans. Mm. I think it's I think it's far too big myself. Yeah. Um, but here's what it is, isn't it? But yeah, that makes yeah. a massive difference, mate. Massive difference, right? I mean, yeah, we've got a penalty, so I'm like shocking belief. I'm surprised none of the players are ever came in faint at time when they were taking penalty. Uh, but yeah, all being well, it's it, this can we don't have to wait like over here for the next penalty award, but yeah, uh, yeah, but we'll I think there's been a lot of debate about whether, whether it's a penalty or not. And, and we've we've had some very harsh penalties given against us, but it would definitely it there, is, is yeah. it. Is it? Is it? Yeah. A, it's a strike on goal, and it's it. His forearm, his forearms are down by his side out, and so like this, it's his forearms, it's on ball, yeah. it's. It's, it's a bit harsh because it's he probably couldn't have got out of the way of it, but also a cut of strike were on target. So mm. it, it's one of them, isn't it? It's, it's, it's got to be given it. And it's it it definitely was handball, even though a lot of Shrewsbury fans thought it were a bit harsh. But good penalty by, by Kane. I mean, he yeah. stepped up. There were a lot of them wanting that penalty. I suppose because we don't get that many, nobody knows. <laughs> what <happened to> us, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, if you missed it and you looked a bit of a fool, wasn't it? Because it, it yeah. definitely, you know, there were a little bit of argy bargy about who were taking it. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, glad to see he sent keep keep us out of going, didn't he? Just slotted it down middle. Yeah. Uh, the then the second goal was just all about Devante Cole, weren't it? Well, Miles De Gibney and, uh, and Devante Cole. So De Gibney's won that battle there. He's played it down line, and Devante's just skinned him. Their defenders tried to pull him back. Aunt Lino got in his way. <laughs> yeah. But Devante's pulled away from player and not not in and shook shook Lino out of way to get yeah, down. Yeah. Once, once he once he's passed that, once he's <coughs> passed that last defender, Devante, once he's passed him and he opens his legs up, they aren't gonna they aren't gonna yeah. catch him else chance of catching him. Yeah. He just is it is it they don't seem to catch him even when he's got ball. They just he just seems to pull away. And he's cut into area. I thought he were gonna shoot, and then really, you know, Styles is there and he lays it off for Styles and knocks it in. Um it, yeah. it were a, it were a lovely bit of football, really. That second yeah. goal, it really was. We hit him at pace, you know. It was like watching Man United years ago when they used to counter attack really fast, and it, it were it were great to see. Mm. So win, Oakwell win, back Oakwell against Fleetwood coming up. Um, yeah. Just before we get on about the Fleetwood game, and um, there's been some people messages and stuff like that, and you've probably seen it on social as well. Uh, a gentleman called Pete uh, Higgs. Um, yeah. What we're asking for is on the 65th minute to be a minute's applause. Yeah. Uh, a short, sudden illness, uh, unfortunately, lost his life. I know it could have Fred's going to be at bottom end at Pontefract, at uh, Ponty end, uh, with a flag. And again, it's just uh, us as fans being as a, a family all getting, you know, getting together, getting together for the 65th minute applause. And no doubt, you know, some of the Fleetwood Town fans all being all can join in as well. Hopefully. But yeah, it's just to uh, put it out there because it's what we do. Um, well, he said, isn't it? Someone who's been a lifelong yeah. Bowser fan. I think he, you know he's one of one of the uh, one of the court, regular courthouse reds that goes up and yeah. down country watching watching reds. So it's a you know it's a it's a, well, it's a sad day when anybody when anybody passes away. But when a, when one of the Bowser family passes away, it's yeah. So we're saying it's the very least we can do, isn't it? It's the very yeah. least we can do. So we'll show his respects and uh, once a red, always a red. So we'll get to the Fleetwood game again. Again, you'd be looking for another winnable game, uh, yeah. Ryan. Surely we should, we should we should kick on and win. We should kick on and beat Fleetwood. I don't, I don't want to be too cocky, but I think they've been a bit up and down. They've got a good result against Reading away though. Mm-hmm. Uh, Saturday, very late goal. So fair play, you know the fans travelling all that way on on a Tuesday night to Reading, and um, they got the lead, didn't they? Reading got back into it, and then they've got a late goal of Fleetwood. So fair play, mm-hmm. um, but they've not done brilliantly of. of you know, throughout throughout the season. So, hopefully, it should be three points. But in this league, you never know, do you? Yeah. You never know uh, if we have if we have a really if we have an off day, then the, they'll definitely be in with a chance. But us being at Oakwell, we're on a bit of a run at the moment with regards to you know not getting beat. We're up we're up there near the top of the league. You'd expect us to come away with three points Saturday. 
You need to start off, don't we, against Shrewsbury. We need to start front foot and take games yeah. to them, don't let. We can't afford to let them settle in. We've seen it before. What, what against structures like your your Blackpools and your Portsmouth from an uh, Oxford have come to work well. Professional, mm-hmm. like you said, Via, we set against Shrewsbury. We sent a bit more on front foot, and I'd be looking for the same response against Fleetwood. No disrespect, Fleetwood would have been bottom, you know, been bottom four, been the third from yeah. bottom. So again, we got a good result away at Reading, so you can't take him for mugs. But again, it's down to us. Would you? No changes. Keep it as it is. Absolutely. Yeah, as long as long as long as, uh, as, long as Styles is all right, because he, 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 he was limping it towards back end at second mm. half, first half, mm. one and then he's uh, Adam Phillips has come on for him. So I'm mm. fingers crossed that Callum's all right. But um, you know, hopefully they took him off at half time as a precautionary because he, he was limping. They didn't want to. Yeah, because um, he looked he like he looked like he'd run it off towards back in the half, but maybe they took him off as a, as a, as a precaution. But has been two now up. I um, mean, a lot were made about uh, Killip uh, being in goal because Roberts is out after a broken finger, I believe, and had a, an operation on it. But if I'm being honest, I didn't think it's all right. I think Killip looks all right. Yeah, he's, looks all right. Yeah, I, I have concerns at this. I'm thinking, oh, God. but he didn't have much to do too, was he? But he did all the hard bits really well. The, yeah, the, the, you know the difficult the the on. Uh, the unsexy part of goalkeeping, which is managing your area, bringing the crosses in, distribution, getting all that right, because you've got to get all that right. To be I've been keeper. impressed with you. I'm glad you said that, because his distribution has been really quick. And I identified yeah, he's quick, ball quick, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, loads quicker on that. I'm glad you identified that. I think you were one in, I, don't, I think it was second half, and it came over, and he did this throw, and oh my God, it was like a right ball, and it were off and yeah. away. I thought, yeah. yeah. When he came, a lot of Hartlepool fans says he says he weren't he weren't so great like. But if you think if you think how well Liam Roberts has been playing, you know that's got a lot to do with with, with the coaching staff as well as well as him being an excellent goalkeeper. Mm. But you know when he first came, he was a bit shaky. Wasn't he Roberts in yeah. certainly in pre season he made he made a few mistakes, but he's been he was absolutely rock solid since season started. Mm. Um, but you got to think that a lot of that's to do with with, with coaching. So hopefully that's helped bring Ben Killip on a lot. And mm. also, he's, he's training with he's training with Liam Roberts every day. Mm. He's got someone to he's got someone to chase after. So you know that's I think that obviously could bring it um, could have brought his game on as well. So Fair point. yeah, I mean he hasn't looked out of place at all. You know, touch wood, and he's he, he, mm. he hasn't he hasn't looked he hasn't looked shaky at all. He's looked absolutely fine. He's 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 coming for crosses. Has been brilliant. He's, yeah, you know what I mean. He's he's, he's taking. He's just give him half a chance, and it's his ball. Mm. Yeah, fair, fair point that way on about training. He's probably learning different training methods and working alongside uh, Roberts, no respect to Hartlepool, but different class of players probably bringing best out of, uh, yeah, best out of he's, yeah, he's, pushing, so. he's pushing for a spot and I think he's he's done he's done a good job. Hmm. I still think as soon as Roberts is fit, he comes back in um, hmm. just because he's he's that good, is Liam Roberts. Yeah. You know, he's that good. He's, for me, he's best goalkeeper in division. And that, hmm. we, are, we are, you know, easy. Healthy we competition are, you know, goal, isn't it? Like yeah, healthy competition. Um, so, but Killip's done it. I can't fault him. I said, no. you know, I thought against, I thought against Leighton Orient. I thought he had a great game. That's, you know, <laughs> he, made a, he made a fantastic save in yeah. the second half. So, long mate, continue. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, no changes. I've been, I'm going to say impressed, but I, I, I think the give me. I think every game is getting better. He's quality, yeah. He's quality, yeah. And at I mean, first, when he came first game, yeah. I thought, oh no. I think it yeah. was just, it was just nerves. He was hoping, you know, I think he's he's coming to a new club. He's trying to he's trying to impress, and I think he was just a bit overzealous. Mm. Uh, and we had to take him off before he got a red card. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. But since he's come in, he's so comfortable on ball. And actually, when when he came, when we signed him, the brother said he'd seen a, a write up from the, this like French journalist that said he's never seen a centre back who looks as comfortable on ball. And obviously we'd yeah. not seen him at that time. Oh. And and it's it's starting to look like that. He just it he, he's it looks to be it looks to be easy to him. Oh. Uh, and even if he gets half a yard behind defender, he's got great he's got great pace. And he comes back and he muscles his way. And he, you know, he, again that, that when we got the second goal to, to muscle off that defender, then play that ball down line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's he's turning into a he's turning into a very you know his classmate. He's turning into a great signing. So Harry and Dizou, yeah, mm-hmm. it reminds me a bit of John Stones though the way he comes out with ball mate. His feet, you know, he comes yeah, out. he's sure. not long legs. He's pacey. He's got a great he's got a great pass. It reminds me of Stones a bit. 
uh, you know, yeah, good, shout. A good shout. Yeah. And it's, it'd be interesting to see come, what, what happens with Lopatar when Lopatar comes two or three weeks to say now, aren't they? So, mm-hmm. again, competition places. Yeah. I think, I think for me, in an ideal world, well, I don't know actually, I'm undecided, but I think in an ideal world, maybe push if Lopatar does come back in, he's, he's match fit. Uh-huh. Put him back where he was, put the Gibney at right centre back, and then maybe push Williams out to right wing back, right wing back. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking uh, that. Yeah. I don't, I, I really don't think that'll happen myself because I think, I think Collins really likes um, Williams at centre back. Uh-huh. So I think we'll probably see that, and I don't think Lopatar will come back in. He's, he's, he ain't getting in. Inf- I mean, it, to be fair, Casper did no wrong really. I thought, I thought it was really solid. But well, do you know what? He, he I gave felt his, he gave his a level above me. I it, felt sorry. Good? I felt sorry for Jack Shepard. When yeah. uh, McCart coming for him, but now I'm like, there's competition. Yeah, they look, yeah. the, the back three at the minute look <clears> solid. <throat> they look <throat> solid at the minute. They look a bit unflappable. They're playing well together. Uh, McCart McCart likes to come out with ball at his feet as well, doesn't he? So, <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I won't see any. I can't see any changes, mate, for, for Saturday. Yeah. I mean, not even mentioned. looked a lot better than we could see up top with with with, with Devante. I thought we looked a lot more yeah. pacey. Yeah, I like a lot that, more yeah. dangerous. Although when Watt has come on, I'll give him his due. You know what I mean? He played all right. He, mm-hmm. You know, he played all right. He's just, he just hasn't got that pace, has he? But that, it, you know, the way that him and Devante linked up, linked up for the third goal, he's seen, you know, he's seen Devante, he's, he's picked up the, the ball off Devante, then he set, he's just laid it into his path nicely behind that defender, mm-hmm. sent him through, and he's, he's finished it off. So, you know, it worked out. It worked out well. I think McAtee's definitely got to get in front. Yeah. My only concern with the what's happened up front is that when. Um, when that what lad got sent off, Sam, I think it was his bloody surgery. Cosgrove. Cos, hey, thank you. I wouldn't have got that in a million years, you know. It's just <laughs> gone. But when Cosgrove got sent off uh, against Leighton Orient, obviously he's got a game ban. That then exposed, you see, because when Devante went off, Benson come up for him, come mm. up for him. So then we had Watters and he pushed Phillips up front, didn't he? Mm. Mm. And then he dropped Benson, Benson into centre midfield. Mm. When you think that we've let Dallas and Ollie Shaw go on loan, and well, then, Marsh. And then extended Marsh, Marsh, is well. Marsh has extended his stay at York. Jello uh, played, Jello played it morning, didn't he? But we've got yeah. four strikers there. We could have utilised that bench. Yeah, and we didn't have any. <laughs> I want to Marsh to come back, me. I'm glad you said that. I want yeah, to Marsh I mean, to come back. Yeah, I, I just so want it to work out for Marsh. Somebody put somebody put an interesting quote online. You know, is it is is he the real deal, Marsh? Or, or we all just wanted him to be because he's a local lad. You know, because he he's been to York. He hasn't scored yet for York, has he? He's um, playing about and he's played an average of about half an hour, half an hour a game over the time he's been there. He's extended his stay, so they must be happy with him. They've ex- extended his stay, but he's not scored. Having said that, I thought he was playing all right for us when he when he come yeah. on first, first first few couple of league yeah. games where he come on. I mean, he even set up that um, the second goal against Cheltenham, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he scored bagged a couple, so he got one in League Cup and he got one in Pizza Cup. So. Uh-huh. I yeah, just want it to work out for him because he's a bouncy lad. I'd love to, you know, I, you know, I think it's his dream to score in front of Ponty. I did Pat Ponty because when, when he mm. scored in league, he scored against Preston, but he scored at the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He scored to the end, didn't he? So, yeah. All, I all being well, I, just, well, I didn't understand the decision to extend his, mm. extend his um, loan with York when when we're a bit light at mm. the minute. From, I mean, if you start and we call him McAtee, bang on. I think mm. you know what I mean, but then obviously when you start making subs, or if somebody gets an injury, it's a I don't know. But anyway, yeah. it just yeah. it just stood out that the fact that when Devante come off, we had no other striker to come on on Saturday yeah. on, on Tuesday night. Yeah, it, it highlighted it, it a lot. Um, uh, after get, you know, we'll get on about school predictions about in a minute. We kind of agreed there's going to be no changes and stuff. Another bit of good news coming out of well is that uh, according to what's been on socials yet again. It looked like Connell should be playing 45 minutes of football. 45 minutes on Monday, mate, for 21s. So, all being well, we start. Everything crossed, mate. Yeah. He does not pick up an injury and he's yeah. all right. And he gets through that. Absolutely champion. I've got everything crossed for him, mate. Yeah, I'm hoping it all looks smart. Yeah. Can't wait to see him back. Uh, so, again, a bit of a good feel factor is that, you know, he's been in training. Um, now he's going to get 45 minutes of football under his belt. Like I said, keeping everything crossed for him. Not just for the uh, his you know football kind of thing, but also him Sam being right. You know, is is every uh, mystery illness. We want him to be right and be right. Yeah, as, absolutely. Like, I, a, I, a player, I just can't wait to see him. I just hope we don't rush him back, mate. 
Yeah, because they're so desperate for him to play, like stick him in starting when when he gets back into the first team. So I don't think that'd be it's right. probably desperate to play. All it's probably it. back in. Make sure he's all right. Make sure he's not picking up any injuries. Because last thing he wants to do after all this time is to go and pick up an injury. Then on yeah. top of it, you know, on top of that, yeah. So um, yeah, everything crossed for me. But brilliant to see. Him. Brilliant to you know that he's coming. He's going to get some football under his belt Monday, and yeah. hopefully we're only a couple of weeks away from seeing him in first eleven. Yeah, be nice. Be nice. First team, should I say? More like, might be yeah. a little bit longer till he's actually starting. Yeah, be nice. Be nice to see him, even if he comes off. At, you know, comes on as a sub. He's no a star player. He's isn't a star. It? Yeah, he's going to have a rousing reception. He's, he's a star player. I mean, even even Styles, there are you know there are superstars, yeah. aren't there? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll briefly touch about the FA Cup stuff. Um, I know it's a lot's been said. Uh, uh, sports trust have got involved. There's a lot of fans, even Orsham, have got in contact, and they kind of understand it's not us as fans, you know, because us as fans are all kind of the same stuff. It's down yeah. South Dogs, please. Bounce Football Club have gone a bit quiet on it, and it's it's not going to change. It's quite obvious it's not yeah. going to change. But it's, I just feel so, sorry for Orsham because even if they'd gone to Sunday, it'd be a bit more palatable. But for a Friday night, it's going to be a big game for them. You know, to come up on a Friday night, a long trek. It, it for me, and this is where it takes it all out to FA Cup stuff like this. It like it ruins it for me. You know, it's uh, really, they've ruined it, mate. There's, there, there were no need to do this because, like I said, they could have gone to Sunday if they desperately needed to. Why? Why? Who's sat round the table and thought, yeah, I tell you what, awesome coming up from coming up from London. It's near London, isn't it, awesome So coming up from down south on a Friday night. Mm. You know, people have to work. People yeah. have got jobs, and then they can't. So they can't get up unless they take a day. And then they're going to have to take a day's holiday and stuff like that to get up there. And I mean, I'm sure a lot of them won't mind taking a day's holiday, but they don't want to do it on a bloody Friday night. They don't want to mm. make a day of it. You know, they're a seventh tier team, which is same as like Osset United up here. They've done brilliantly getting to the first round. They've got a good team within the. You know, I think we're probably one of the bigger teams in the in the first round draw. Um, you know, they've got a. From their part, because we're, so we're certainly not a big club, but from them, you know, it's a good, you know, they're going to come mm. and play a big, a, a much bigger stadium than the Ulster, mm-hmm. uh, playing a, a, a League One team that are up near the top of League One. I think it would have been absolutely brilliant for them to get in front of a decent crowd at Oakwell. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe live the dream, you never know. But yeah. to do it on a Friday night, it's just, it's just really poor. It's poor from um, at South Yorkshire Police, just ridiculous decision making they don't even like give it a second thought it's almost like oh yeah they can play it friday night mm. it's, it's stupid mate they should have played it sunday if all else and i really feel for the club for horsham and i feel for the feel for the fans i think if you've looked online a lot of their fans and then there were a statement an official statement that come out of that i think the supporters trust for, yeah. for, for horsham actually said that they thank the Barnsley fans for, for giving the support but not the club because obviously the club have just just seem yeah. to have just accepted it i don't know how much clout the club actually have? Having said that, I don't know how much clout they have. Once South Yorkshire made it, uh, South Yorkshire Police have made a decision mm. whether we can actually do what about it anyway. Mm, that's um, true. So it would have been it would have been nice to you know for someone to you know our club statement to come out and say you know we can't we've appealed or we've done this or we've yeah. done that. Hotel business. And I've tried a couple of things online, a few on a few red, you know, fan support groups on Facebook to see, you know, if there'd be any interest in trying to get more fans in. Let's try do something for Ocean because they get forty five percent of the sales, and it's a lot of it's fallen on deaf ears. A lot of negativity, to be fair. People say, no, mm. no, we're not doing, we're not bothering. I'm not going, I'm not doing that. They'll only open all, east and lower. I'm like, right, well, yeah, we do go. Don't know what to, don't know what to say. I'm, I'm going to go though. I'm, I'm yeah, gonna go. yeah, I'm going. Uh, so yeah, Fleetwood kids for a quid and all. So. Yeah. Should be should bump it up a bit more. Uh, should do a bit more of that, mate. Should do yeah. a bit more of that because you know, at the end of the day, we're getting if what for so Barnsley fans are actually getting top end hmm. eleven thousand, twelve thousand hmm. if it, if it's if if it's a bigger game. Hmm. Then obviously other the away fans are making up the rest, aren't they? Yeah. Obviously have a mass, massive effect on us overall attendance when away fans are bringing two hundred. So, but I think they need to do more of it to get because there's plenty of space in East Ham. There's still plenty of seats in Ponty End. Mm. Um, and like I've said before, getting young fans in is gets gets them to fall in love with the club, and and then they're the fans of the fans future, of the future, aren't they? Aren't they? It's yeah. it, it's very cyclic in that matter. So you've got to get young fans interested in coming to Opel and falling in love with the club because they're going to be the next fans of the the next generation of fans. Yeah, so should do more of it. 
Yes, more of it, and I'll, I'll be well the candle. Um, I think there's some limitations with EFL for some bizarre reason, but here you go. But I think EFL should be encouraging it for a lot of clubs, if I'm being honest, especially when you drop down into like such a League One and League Two when you know, on a midweek game or uh, there's uh, away fans not going to take that yeah. many, uh, allow them. I'm, I can't see what harm it's going to do. Kids for a quid, uh, just just get them in. Um, I think there should be. A, I think there should be a percentage of tickets from from all the EFL clubs to give to people from families that, that can't afford to come. I think there ought to be yeah. incentives through the EFL to get there because it, you know it seems unfair that people's financial status um, it sort of hinders them coming to football if they really right. want to come. I'm not saying that we should give loads of free tickets away, but I think a certain percentage given away to disadvantaged people and people who can't afford to come. Hmm. You know, I, I think I think all EFL clubs should do that. Yeah, I know yeah. Reading community do a, a lot of uh, good work on that, and I, 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 no doubt will be other clubs what's got them kind of yeah. the communities kind of thing. But like I said, yeah, with EFL, surely we're getting partnership with. You know, I mean, I remember back in time it used to be McDonald's and we did all this football and community and stuff. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure EFL could join with a partnership per se. I don't know some kind of family business uh, in conjunction with. I don't know. I'm not going to come out with names because it's going to be advertising for them. But say a well-known business or a supermarket and say, look, you know, uh, each club this is donated by blah 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 for EFL trust or whatever for disadvantaged children or cost living crisis and people what's not like uh, you know struggling to make financial and meet and again it's like that give back to the community and not just for Barnsley you can go down to you know to League Two and even uh, conference whatever you want to do how you want to do it because you're not going to sell them all that the stands there to utilize and like I said there's this potentially getting involved in football getting involved in sport and that you trigger yeah. it and it always seems to happen after there's like a World Cup final and it always gets me like this, uh, like any final or uh, cricket or like that. Everybody wants to pick up a bat and go out playing this and, and doing that. So you get them involved and they've been. And again, I think EFL could do a lot more on that kind of thing and said, yeah, do you know what? Yeah. There's a, a bit of opportunity here to engage. But wanting kids to get involved in sport and be fit and all this other, yeah, the opportunity. Get them going. Push it Absolutely. out. My, my, yeah. my concern is, and this is not just for Bounder, this is for all, all EFL, all, all football clubs, is that just with this cost of living crisis and the way that it's gone and the cost of living going up so much that we are going to lose, you know, a big chunk of that next generation of fans because the parents have never been able to afford to go. Yeah. Uh, I understand that clubs have got bills to pay. Listen, it's not mm. cheap running a football club. It's not cheap running a stadium on a Saturday. Mm. The amount of staff and everything that goes into it. So I get that. They can't give tickets away, but I think they could make it, they could have schemes that make it more affordable. Or there might be big gaps in that next generation of, of fans that have never gone and fallen in love with the football clubs and mm. just never got around to actually going and don't go. So, yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, that's we'll yeah, that's true. Um, and again, EFL will end up suffering because, like I said, the Meccans meet, we don't get we don't get the privileges of a, of a TV rights like your top tier team. Yeah, we can look at grounds now, mate. A lot of EFL grounds that you watch, a lot of them just look half empty. Mm. Yeah, a lot of them look half empty. Yeah. And like I say, it's not cheaper in football club, especially on match day when you've got staff. I remember no, last year, yeah, we were on about the yeah, well, yeah, insurances, all that sort of stuff. Then you've got all, everything else that comes wrong with them. It's, it's, de it's definitely not cheap. So I understand that they've got to get a certain amount for tickets, but I think they could make a certain percentage, yeah, you know, cheaper and stuff like that to get, make sure people every because you, you know, football used to be and it always should be it's a sport for everybody. Mm. Mm. Not just the, it used to be a working man's. It used to be a working man's sport, and he's, he's sort of slipped away from that. Not, yeah, not making it public privilege. Years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I remember last season as well, uh, Rum was going about because it cost electric and that. We're on about playing some flood lights in winter, early kickoffs and that. And that, you know, I mean, that's how much it were going to be affecting the AFL potentially. Yeah, never happened. But you, I wouldn't have been surprised if it would have happened if it had said instead of making a three o'clock kickoff and making it midday because of obviously we've. Uh, Cost of living with electric for such as like clubs in League Two and, and, and even League One, dare I say it, such yeah, as like absolutely. Uh, and that. So, again, EFL maybe it could do a bit more, uh, working a lot more in conjunction with the football clubs. It could be a bit better. Uh, just suggestions. So, getting back to Fleetwood game, uh, Ryan, score prediction, mate. Um. I'm going to go for a convincing win. I think, I think, well, I think, I think I'm going to say 3 0. I don't want to get too giddy, but I think I think I think we'll be I think we'll win three now. 
Yeah, snap. I'm going to say that for you know. I just think if we can get back to back home wins, a bit of confidence, no changes, all being well, no injuries as well. Like I said, with Styles, all be, just like precautionary. But having said that, I'm going to go for you know. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I think, yeah, I'm just going to go for you know. I can't see Fleetwood really offering much. I could see Fleetwood making it awkward for us and trying to set up. Um, we'll definitely do that. We'll definitely do that last season, really, well, that yeah. last minute goals and that. But I think if we start to fight, we did against Shrewsbury, we can build on that. And I think yeah. the key is getting a, an early goal. Key's um, getting an early goal because then it changes their plan, then. Yeah. It changes yeah. their plan. It, 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 you know, they've got to push forward to try and get an equaliser. And then we, we've just got that pace at the minute to. Uh, with McAtee and Cole up front, if we can get that ball in at their feet, you know, I think I think we'll get him behind. Be I think we can. I think we can win convincingly on Saturday. Might come back to bite me on ass. I might end up we are going to be first, but I think come. I think realistically, we should come away with three points. Really, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. So uh, we covered quite a bit, to be fair. So all being well, we're going to be coming from five o'clock, depending on injury time. It's going to be a balance of win. Uh, keep healthy in third. Keep putting pressure on Oxford in second. Uh, for any Fleetwood Towns watching, a uh, safe journey. Oh, yeah, uh, coming numbers make it a safe journey, a safe journey back. Have a good weekend, all being well. It can be even better come uh, full time for Barnsley. So, Ryan, as always, it's been a pleasure talking to you, mate. Yes, a few uh, topics. Look at Connell, um, um, come back, 65 minute applause, and a Barnsley win, surely, against Fleetwood. One thing left to say. You reds. <laughs>